Hello everybody and welcome to the first match of the World Cup second round between Velahopia and Silsay. Um, Velahopia has a 72% win rate in Chance Ladder with humans. Uh, Velahopia, uh, blah, blah. Silsay won the toss and chose to receive. He has a 54% win rate in Champs Ladder. Silse qualified from Franco Bowl and Velahopia qualified from Champs Ladder 15 by winning it. I believe Velahopia is Finnish and uh, Silse is French, so there's the, uh, there's the World Cup aspect for you. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting matchup. I think even after one game, Undead are starting to catch up to where humans are. I mean, at the end of the day, if you were 50 TV down against humans, you wouldn't be too bothered with you in Champs Ladder. So, I think hum I think already the Undead are catching the humans, catching up. Um, but still, you know, Velahobi is a great coach, and humans are still good. They're just maybe not as good. I mean, they're the best in the first game. I think humans are at their best in the first game. It's arguable whether they're the best team in the first game. But I think they're definitely at their best in the first game. Um, Valarbi has gone three rerolls, Apo reserve. Silsay has gone for the tournament standard, four ghouls and a reserve. Of course, for the foul with only one reserve there. It, it was no, uh, it was a quick snap, wasn't it? Not, uh, not a bribe. So that was a bit rowdy. Gave up a hit from the ogre as well. Um, skills wise, uh, Silsay has added a block to his mummy. And Velahopia has added guard to his catcher. And uh, Velahopia told me that he, he wished he hadn't got blocked in his throw and wished he got a nice blow on his tackle blitzer. But, you know, I mean, it's not bad that. And to be fair, the block on, his, the, block on the thrower saved him in the first game and let him blitz within this game. So, you know, it, it's not bad to have the block on the thrower. It was a bit of insurance against Wood Owls, which I understand absolutely. So I don't think it was a bad shout at all. I'm a little surprised that um, Silsa used block, used his double for block on his mummy, because with two block ghouls, I think I would have put guard on one of them, and then, you know, normals could have been more guard on mummies, or maybe his block or resil on a ghoul, and then you'd have had the option to, with having two block ghouls, you would have had the option of giving. Um, Show hands to one if you played against Wood Elves. But there's no real Wood Elves on this side of the draw now, so I guess he doesn't need to care about having show hands on a ghoul. I think that was definitely the play, like going block on them both, so it is, I think I do like that because then it gives you the option of guard or show hands depending on who you're playing and stuff. Or just ignoring them and taking block and mm, it's still good, isn't it? Like, I took block on my catcher for the option of guard on the catcher. I took mighty blow on the dancer, but I've still got the option for guard if I if I win a bunch of games. Or, you know, I would have had the option for guard. I do regret that I got on the catcher, but you know, at least there was... There were options open, weren't there, to tailor... To tailor your team against your next opponent, basically. It was pretty good. I like the blitz of the three dice. Well, there was the chance to get greedy and block this guy in for a three dice, and then, and you know, block could have blocked this guy first, so that if he'd got a push, he could have three diced, and then he two diced here, and if he'd got a pow, the other could have still three diced. So, arguably, but he wanted to move that blitzer up there anyway. So, arguably, uh, you know, could have done him in a different order. And I guess if he pushed, he was going to push him to here. So that's why I did it in that order. So he, it's because he wanted this guy over there, so that's why I did it in that order. I think I would have moved on to the greedier, the greedier blocks route, but worked out fine. Solid defense from Velahopia here, three lines of three. No, no way through on the left side, so Silso is going to have to go back to kind of the middle area, I think. Three dice blitz with the guard from the uh, block mummy. I mean, block mummy is still really good, especially if they don't have loner or bonehead, so you've got no problem with hitting, you know, trying to hit 16 times with this mighty block mummy is definitely what he wants. 
So, you know, block of movies is definitely really good. No doubt about it. Way better than Blocker and Elga. Well, I'll be here as the a chain here to hit the ghoul or to chain out, chain away the mummy. Also, if he wanted, he could blitz the uh, mummy here and base the ball. No, not base the ball, base the two ghouls though. Could be interesting. So he does get rid of the old, get rid of the mummy. It's fair enough. I mean, if this was a tackle, maybe you could have put it on the ghoul. But even then, you don't want to give away the hit, the mighty blow hit, do you? I think this is good. Good strats to not get punched by Mighty Blow. A big line of players with a bunch of guard. I think he's got to cover this area more though, I think. I think this is he's giving this giving him a bit too much leeway to go down this side. Maybe the catcher could come over here or something. But he doesn't. I do like the deep tackler there. Up here. Oh, yeah, maybe if he'd if he just had something there, he might have stopped this. But I mean, this isn't that bad. He's still got plenty to swing around with and stuff. Can tackle blitz the go there, or just hit hit the bite and put tackle on the ghoul. So you know you can still you can still react to this very well. Got to jam the mummy in here, haven't you? I'm a bit shocked that he didn't jam the mummy in. Because that's good just giving him you could have even put him here, that's just making it easy for him to move these guys around with him. So he hits the hits the white. Which is fair, and then bases the ball with tackle. Gotta base the ball. Cheeky, cheeky kill from the ogre. Regen, though. Reg I mean, Regen is pretty good, isn't it? It does make them better, way better than an apple. And it's still, it's still relevant in this. You could argue that maybe that was, that was too much. I mean, it does shut him down completely, which is, you know, good. It's good to shut him down completely, but now you've got to put some guys back here, I think, to stop him uh, kind of switching sides. Uh, yeah, I think maybe that if this catcher had been there, that might have been better. Block, block paying massive dividends there. You know, maybe his plan was to put something over here if he if he pushed the mummy. Chain push doesn't seem super good. I mean, I guess he, he gets to occupy people. Time for double skulls. Could have chosen the both down there. Um, I don't know why he didn't. But this is, yeah, huge, huge three plus. Eight. Yeah, I mean, this is the only place he could go really. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't have minded a bit more stuff out there. So now he's really got to shut down the switch to the left hand side. Um, he's got to probably blitz this ghoul, I think. And then try and, you know... He's still worried about this ghoul. He, there's, a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of threats, but I think you've got to... Probably should have moved... Safe moves first. Should have got this uh, tackle up and moved him across first. Nice little blitz for him. Fair enough. That's one reason to not stand your players up first. Because you're going to do something. But um, I think I would have wanted a blitz of the ogre here and then paste the ball. Just because it would have made it harder for him. 
Obviously born in here is terrible, so there's a good argument for not activating the ogre at all. Double <laughs> board down in double skulls is not the greatest. Um but now there's there's good you can get forward quite well here, can't you? Um, turn six. So he doesn't even need to get in the other half. Could have blocked with the uh mummy there to free the free the white on the pal. But this guy can come across. This guy can. This guy can. I don't like this man. Ghoul there, he better than Huge, huge cards and a death. Valley Hop here uses the apple and takes the death. It's a it's a schoolboy error against against undead, because obviously if he'd taken the bad the uh, serious injury, it was still you know, serious injury or, or death doesn't doesn't matter to Vela Hoppia. But it he gives he gives him a, a zombie for no reason there, so that was a that was a bit of a mistake for sure. Um you know, whether he'll get punished or not is another question. So. It's tricky, I think I'd have probably left the zombie there and just put the ball here. So it'd be a 4 plus dodge for him. Um, as it is, he does a bit of a potato and leaves him leaves him uncovered to the two dice splits. I, I'm not sure I like that. I think maybe zombie here and ghoul here. He'd have still been in range. He'd still have had two other ghouls in range. Um, running himself out unprotected there. A bit, I think, is a mistake. So yeah, he's going for the dodge blitz. Huge, huge reroll. Two GFIs to hit. Gets the, gets the hit. Gets the pow. I like pushing him there, so it wasn't allowed. Because I think the, you know, if it if it got in the crowd and got thrown back here, it's way too easy for the undead to roll some dice and get it. So I like keeping it inbounds for sure. So yeah, that's that's tough. It's pretty tricky, isn't it, now? For uh, both sides to score, really. But obviously that's a win for Vela Hop here. I think there's there's something he could have done over here. He could have maybe done something better than what he's done. But he's got a lot of players. He's got a scoring threat. I like that. He doesn't have to get the touchdown this turn, does he? Could just improve his position for next, which is kind of how he's playing it. I like that. Because scoring threat put tackle on him. Darling, he is good, isn't he? Sure, he doesn't get the he doesn't get the touchdown this turn, but it's not in a bad spot for him. <laughs> I say that it's his drive and it's turn seven, so it's it's pretty bad. Maybe he could have gone for the. I mean, you know, maybe he's going to go for the dodge out, pick up, pass or something. So Vela Hobby doesn't take the both down there because he wants the chain. He he wants to be able to blitz here with with the guard to get to clear the tackle zones. Whereas if he taken the both down, he just couldn't have made the hit. So that was a good. A good non non knockdown. Now here he's greedy. Because he he went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, double GFI. And now if you fail the GFIs, you're in a much better spot, I think, than if you fail the dodge. And then obviously you've got the uh the reroll with the catch, you've got a team you've got a skill reroll for the catch, but then not for the dodge. So he was a little bit greedy going for this because it is a one in nine without a reroll, um, and he does one in nine. I mean, it, it's it's a minor thing, it's a very minor thing, but it is something he should have considered. I'm not saying it's even wrong, and maybe he did weigh up not making it. 
um, and making the double GFI. But I, I think I would have gone for the double GFI. Of course, it's easy for me to say that watching the game with no nerves or pressure or anything. But I think, I think I would have gone for the double GFI. Um, as it happened, you know, who's to say? Who's to say what what was right and what was wrong? Gets the blitz off. Doesn't get the knockdown though, which is pretty huge because he's got tackle as well. I mean, not knockdown, just needed a push. Um, also here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. GFI, GFI handoff is probably better than trying the pass. But he's, he's got the chance. And fails. <laughs> so now, uh, yeah, that was... That, that was a bit... Uh, a bit crap. Now, <laughs> a bit crap. This is There's a huge misplay incoming here from Vela Hoppy, because I remember it. Um, now, how do you score here? I'll tell you how you score. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. GFI, GFI, hand off to this blitzer who's here. And then the blitzer runs around and passes it to the catcher. Um, I actually didn't really see this, but obviously once Vela Hoppy had made the blitz, I'm like, oh, that's really clever. And then he pushes him the wrong way. If he'd pushed him, I don't know if it was a misclick or what, if he'd pushed him into the blitzer, the blitzer would have gone back a square. Then the ogre could have blocked the white and he'd have been free. I mean, he gets a KO out of it, so that's that's good. But he could have, you know, if he just pushed that different square, Olga could have blocked him out, and then he would have been there for the handoff. Um, as it turns out, I didn't even think he would be in range of the long bomb. As it turns out, he is in range of the long bomb. So that's that's my mistake for not counting squares and realizing he would be in range. And the white gets the interception. <laughs> so both sides were actually pretty close to a TD in the end, weren't they? Um, but you know, overall, definitely well defended by Vela Hoppy. So now the undead are, are st I've got 11, but they're down in quality with losing the guard white, absolutely. And the humans have 11 but are down in quality by losing a guard blitzer. However, that, that gives them 3 guard to 0 guard. Yeah. But only 1 strength 5 guy to 2 strength 5 guys. So it's it's pretty it's pretty close, really. But after stopping the the offense obviously you have to favour Vela Hoppia now. Getting the ball, even numbers, first first blocks, getting the uh, the uh, tempo advantage of receiving first. That's, why, that's the word I was looking for. I do prefer standing on the LOS. Um, you know, being a bit worse against perfect defense to be a bit better against blitz. But you know, this is this is a fine setup. Three dice on the block. I do love three dice mighty blow hits, I'm not gonna lie. It's one of the it's one of the things like it's stupid that Wood Elves get it as well as as well as having a team full of like movement eight, dodge, agility four players, <laughs> they also get to make three dice mighty blow hits. It is it is fun the three dice mighty blows, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. So now he's now he's got a man advantage. Tackle on the ghoul's nice, isn't it? He's 
to use all his movement to get the ball. Obviously not going to GFI, just just leave it where it is after he gets it. A little bit weak with the uh, the mummy there. <laughs> The ogre there, there's a possibility for the... Oh, there's not a possibility because he's got the guards protecting him. Very good. Very good, Vela, up here. See, little things like this, I haven't really... A lot of the time when I'm when I'm casting them live, you know, there's a bit of banter in chat and what have you. And I'll see things on the replays that I don't see in the, uh, in the actual live games. So, you know, it's definitely... A bit nitpicky, a lot of the, a lot of spotting, a lot of the things because you can't expect people to spot everything. You know, you do get tunnel vision when you're playing Blood Bowl. You don't spot everything instantly, or well, not always, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, you can move it, move it up to here. Add with the ball to here and just have a big cage, you know, with the whole team all around it. Three dice for the ogre, getting this guy into additional block. Fails, Fails the bonehead. I mean, it is tricky because with four ghouls, they can like be a kind of rubbish Skaven team or a rubbish Lizardman team, if you if you like, and run around and put a load of pressure on with their dodge players. But I think he's gone too narrow here, and he hasn't moved the ball up. And uh, this is going to be key that he hasn't moved the ball up here. Spoiler: I don't like. <laughs> I don't like elf stalling. Even with elves. <laughs> and if he was here, it would be pretty much protected as much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GF, GF. Maybe here or something. I would just rather it's up there. You've got place to defend it. I run away sometimes if like, you know, if it's under threat, you can always run back, you know? But I think it's easier to run away than it is to run forward to get safe if you were. Obviously, then if you get pressured, you can then just move forward. You know, I let, let's let's pause it here and talk about the elf stall for a second, particularly with an agility three team as humans. If the ball's here, and something happens, like you know, he blitzes over here or whatever, and this side collapses, you can run forward there, and you can run back. Um, if you're here. Your only option is, you know, you've, you've got much less range of movement, haven't you? Because all these aren't really an option anyway that you've got. So you've just got so many more options, more more squares you can move, haven't you? Like a bigger radius, that the higher up the pitch you are. And you can always run back if you had to. Now, sure, you could run back into the corner, but that's really awful, isn't it? So I do like having it. I don't like the elf stall, even with elves. Um... I know some people do, and they get good results, so I'm not saying they're wrong, <laughs> I just don't like it. Um, yeah, and you know, if he's to suddenly like pursue a lot here, and let's say he's got one or somebody in contact with the ball, he can't really get away that much, because he's just trying to get back to the rest of his team, whereas if he was with his team, and somebody came around the back, then maybe he could push forward this way or push forward that way. With a bit of a screen, the way the uh, the way the undead did in the first half, didn't they? They, they switched sides over to the left side, and were able to push forward that way. Whereas if you're back, you just don't have that chance. So I do think that was a fundamental flaw with Vela Hobby's drive. Was you know this thrower does not need to be back. He could be up here now. I mean, maybe last turn, fair enough. But this turn, it's super safe. It, I would really want him to come forward last this this turn for sure. I could see him stay leaving back last turn, but I think this turn he should have he should have got forward with him. Uh, or I I would have got forward, and I would have liked to have seen him get forward. But you know that he could have bit, he could have based the ball there, but then you've got your tackle to protect him. So I 
Like, of course he's not an elf team. An elf team could just put their whole team in between there. <laughs> well, wood elves could. Um, and make it very scary. And ev even elves passing is a 2 plus with a reroll and another 2 plus with a reroll. And while that, on the face of it, is very reliable, it's not as reliable as not having to make those rolls at all, is it? So yeah, turn 12, it's an okay spot for turn 12. Um, the humans are getting a bit spread out. You know, this guy pinned on the sideline, these two over here. These here. It's a little bit dodgy, but now you see if the ball was there, you can move it to here. Now, you can't move it to there. Because it's it's not far across enough over and stuff, so yeah, I really didn't like I really didn't like how we played this one. This one. Goals for the dodge, resulting in the standard Kaz from a failed dodge. <laughs> and now things are looking a bit bleak, aren't they? This this flank is basically collapsing. Inviting the undead into this spot, whereas if at least if he'd, at least if he was here and he could have pushed forward, then maybe he could have outrun them or something, or had a handoff option. Or, whereas now he's, his previous turn's actions have got him into this spot a little bit. And of course the good play by Silse. I mean Silse is doing the right things pretty much this half. You know he's defending well. So he could have he could have really pushed forward here, but he hasn't. So in my mind, that's a bit of a let let off of LRB here, and now he's he's got to move up this turn, and then think about how he can protect him. I think. But it's it's already tricky, isn't it? You know, he's lost he's lost that cars. He's got three guys stranded over here, and yeah, it's a tricky spot. And this is it, he just hasn't... I mean, he could go here. He, he could even go here at this point, but he then goes even further back. He's doubling down on the elf screen. Elf screen, elf stall. Um, goes for a dodge, gets, gets stunned. <laughs> but yeah, this is looking... It's looking grim. Now, now that he's freed up this ghoul as well by making that dodge. Well, by failing the dodge, obviously three times out of four it works. But all of a sudden, it's looking really bad with this throw so far behind. And here comes, finally on turn thirteen, we've got the backfield pressure. And a lone ghoul is pretty scary, isn't it? When you're a human with agility three. Now all of a sudden, if he gets forward six, oh, he's got to move the whole team around to do anything. Oh, he's got to make a ridiculous pass. So, yeah, it's tricky. Orman's up with a 1 DB to free the catcher. Now without a reroll, I think he, would, he should have just gone for the pass and score. <laughs> That's, uh, that's pretty scary, isn't it? Face is the goo, but he's got dodge, so that's a huge bonehead fail. Um, yeah, it's just all going... It's all going wrong. And then he frees up this other ghoul as well by failing the dodge, of course. I, th I think maybe he shouldn't have moved him there, because... He was quite well in the way. The the ghoul would have had to go back to get around him. But you know, you can't blame him wanting to maybe bracket this ghoul uh, on either side. And yeah, it's just... 
he's dug a, he's dug a bit of a hole for himself here, hasn't he, Valavia? I think with his with this old storm. He, I think he's reduced his options and what he would have had if he was in the middle. But you know, all, full credit to to Silse for you know getting the. Spot from it. So, yeah, as it happened, he could have gone back there and still meet these two GFIs. And he's coming in for the two dice blitz. So, you know, that wasn't the wrong move to make that dodge, because if he'd made it, it's hard to make the dodges there, isn't it? So, you know, it's. You really can't say it was wrong to go for that dodge. It was just wrong to fail it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, he's had some, I guess, bad dice. You could say Valapia. You know, he's made that dodge into a Kaz, that failed that dodge, failed the dodge from the catcher, rolled some boneheads at bad, bad times, but ultimately, um, he goes for the blitz here with it, without tackle. Definitely could have considered making the dodge to blitz. Um, but didn't just recovers his old good idea. Make, making some dodges now, and this is where I think he makes a huge mistake here of getting the tackle for the scoring threat. Um, he was here, he could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and he could have either screened. Or base the ball or done something. I think it's still nil nil. Um, he's only got one reroll. Still says he's got three, but I think you've got to think the opponent has the ball on a dodge player. I've got a tackler. I think he had to protect the loss. You know, pr pr protect the draw rather than uh, you know and rather than risk the loss here. He was going for the win. I appreciate that, but he's getting double marked. Um, I think when your opponent has, has the ball about eight squares from your end zone, um, maybe you've got to give you know maybe you've got to give up on the score at that point and bring it. That was a canoring threat there, I think, especially with him being the tackler. If it was a rookie, um, you know, fair enough. But the fact he's the tackler, I think you've got to get him into the mix there. And I think that was that was very uh, optimistic from. Well, I'll be to leave him. Oops, so he's got one turn to stop the score and make it to overtime. Fails the GFI. Standard. And does not have the tackle. Can only push him. Gets this guy to make the dodge a little bit harder. Fails the dodge there. Maybe he should have made this one dice block, but I guess he was doing the dodge to make it a 2D. Uh, but yeah, just a blitz to clear the catcher, and then a 3 plus dodge to score. The pop. And he makes the dodge, thanks to the Thanks to the dodge skill. So there you go. Um, you know, full credit to Silse for winning. And I think both people played well on defense. Um, but ultimately, you know, I think Bella Hobby is probably going to be kicking himself for that. You know, what, the positioning of the ball carrier, <laughs> who ironically got, who ironically got man of the match. Um, you know, I think maybe maybe the dice slightly favoured Silse, but you know, I don't think. I don't think Vela Hoppy is going to hide behind that excuse. Um, it is what it is, isn't it? You know, I think on an, on another day it could have worked out as well. You know, so it's not to say it was a mistake. I think it was a mistake. Another, you know, if if, if it had, if it had worked, it would have been all right. But yeah, I think I think ultimately he did make a he did make a bit of a botch of his offense there. But you know. Well played to still say at the end of the day, other people would have still lost in that situation, wouldn't they? There's plenty of people who would have still lost to to Fellow Hoppier there. So fair play to him.
congrats to him commiserations to Vela Hoppia and uh, thanks for watching if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic